last part of this equation, when you think about impressions, is one of my favorite stories. And this is when Dad said, you need to remember, Mary, whenever you come in contact with someone, that you want to make a lasting impression. You want to make sure you pour the comeback sauce on everybody you come in contact with. And that's one of the most powerful things you can do to be successful in the people business. And I am listening to him, and I'm trying not to be disrespectful anymore. And I look at him, and I said, don't forget the comeback sauce, OK? Dad, I know you want to help me, and I get that. Except in my line of work, we are going to have to fire people from time to time. I mean, I, I, I worked in the office and shadowed the day before I accepted the job. And, and I know sometimes we won't be able to work with everybody who comes in. So we won't be able to hire everybody either. So, I mean, there are people that we don't want to put the comeback sauce on because we don't want them to come back. <laughs> and he said, wow, that's an attitude you got to switch before you start your first day tomorrow. Those are exactly the people you want to put the comeback sauce on. It's not whether you want them to come back or not. It's whether the circumstances were different, that they would feel like you treated them in a way where they would want to come back. I said, all right, Dad, where did you come up with that? I get it now. That makes sense to me. Where did you come up with that phrase? He goes, well, I finally had enough money to open the meat market. I had five mouths to feed, three kids and your mom and me. And I'd been working for, you know, Mr. Snow for a lot of years. And, you know, I'd been working since I'd graduated from eighth grade, age 14. I'm coming into Kansas City, sending money home. And finally, I had enough money to open Johnny's Market, Bicklemire Meat, 704 Cheyenne, down in Kansas City, Kansas, right by the river. And I opened up the market, and I'm so happy and proud. And I took two guys with me from Mr. Snow's. And they wanted to be part of a startup with me. They were two of the best guys that I could ever think of to partner with me to make this company work. So here I am. I opened up the market, and uh, we're only in business about a month or so, and the two guys said, came in one morning and they said, Johnny, we're in trouble, we're in trouble. We were at Sammy's bar last night, and we've got a big problem, Johnny. What's the matter? We were, when we were at Sammy's last night, Mr. Snow was there with a couple of our competitors, and they have a plan to put us out of business. What's their plan? They said that every time you advertise a price per pound, Johnny, they're going to advertise 10 cents per pound cheaper until you can't afford to be in business any longer. This is bad, Johnny. Do you think he'll take us back? Will he take us back at the same pay rate, you think? This is bad, Johnny. And Dad said they're really worried. He could tell. He didn't want to laugh out loud at him because he could tell they were very concerned. So he looked at him and he said, guys, it's not a problem. Yes, it is a problem, Johnny. We wanted to follow you. We wanted to be a part of this. And now it's not going to work. Yes, it's going to work. What's not going to work is their plan. Why not? It's simple. Their plan won't work because we don't have any money to advertise. <laughs> None. All we got is the quality of the product we sell, the roof over our heads, what little we pay ourselves. And oh, wait a minute. Here's the key to our success. We're, we're going to be fine. You pour the comeback sauce on everybody who comes in here, and we'll do just fine. What do you mean, comeback sauce? And this is long before all those leadership books that were written that said, you know, empower your people and all of that. Dad just says, I don't know, you figure it out. The recipe is different for every customer. Every single person who comes in here is going to have a different recipe for comeback sauce. You've got to figure it out. Well, what do you mean, Johnny? Give us an example. He said, all right, the guy who came in here a little earlier. He came in, and this is what the interaction looked like. You said, how are you doing today? He said, I'm doing OK. And you said, what would, can I help you with? And he said, I'd like a pound of ground beef. What do you do with that ground beef? I'm going to make some spaghetti for my wife and baby. My wife has been sick all week. My baby's been sick, and she wants spaghetti red for dinner, so I'm going to make that. I said, all right, well, there you go. Thanks for coming in. And he left. It was a nice interaction. If you would have put poured comeback sauce on it. This is what it would have looked like. How are you doing today? I'm doing OK. What can I help you with? I'd like a pound of ground beef. What do you can do with that ground beef? I'm going to make some spaghetti red for my wife and my baby. My wife's been sick. My baby's been sick. It's been a long week for everybody. And that's what my wife wants for dinner. Well, you know what? I'm sorry that your wife and baby have been sick. Sounds like you're doing a good thing taking care of them. You know what? Somebody ought to do something nice for you, don't you think? Here. Take it off the scale. I put the pound there. Let me get you a little extra. Reach into the cooler, grab a little extra, top it off, wrap it up, and say, here. Now, somebody's taking care of you today, too. I just gave you a little extra. You're not charged anything extra. You'll just go pay for your pound. And please know that I hope your wife and baby feel better. And you know that every time you come in here, we'll take good care of you. You know that, right? Tell your friends we'll take care of them, too. And we hope to see you soon. And again, I hope your wife and baby feel better. Was the interaction a little different? Yeah. 
dad said the recipe is different for everybody who comes in here. You figure it out one customer at a time. 